morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to day two of our illustration and digital painting stream. Um, I'm Alice. I'm an illustrator here in SF, and I'm joined by our awesome guest, Roman, Hello. who is also an illustrator in SF. Um, so, uh, hey, everyone. Hey, everyone in the chat. Um, so uh, we're here from Adobe headquarters in San Francisco, um, but let us know in the chat where all of you guys are t tuning in from. So uh, this week we're uh, working in Adobe Photoshop with Roman. Um, and uh, Roman, you are going to be uh, drawing bikes, right? What again? Are you, are you or can you confirm or? Uh, I can deny. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, do, am I supposed to draw back? Because I thought we were doing this yesterday. Oh, okay. You are drawing something, something, uh, something new, I guess. Um. Yeah. Cool. Sh do you want to do you want to share what um, you're drawing? About? Well, I don't know. I thought we would get a theme. Um, okay. Um. Well, the theme for today, um, the contest for everyone is uh, rainy day. So. Well, that's what I'll draw. This is inspired by um, a piece by Jenny Yu, who is our guest during the next hour. Um, I'm seeing in the comments, oh, she makes him afraid. <laughs> I don't think I make who, him afraid. You? Uh, oh, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hey, everyone. Hey, from uh, Samantha from Canada. Um, so, uh, for the contest today, um, the prompt is to use Photoshop CC or Illustrator CC 2018. And then draw an illustration around the theme "Happy uh, Rainy Day." So uh, today we're going to be submitting the artwork via a link in a form at uh, bit.ly/rainyadobe, um, and this info is also in the contest tab, which is on the right side of the uh, chat tab. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're starting off with today. Yeah, I, I guess I'll sketch something out and. Uh... It is a rainy day today, supposedly. Oh, is it? Um, well, I brought my raincoat. Oh, cool. You actually have a raincoat. I have a raincoat. That's cool. I was bullied into buying one. And <laughs> it's not very, it doesn't fit very well. How it, serve, <laughs> it only fits if I don't uh, button it, but then it sort of doesn't serve the purpose. How are you bullied into buying a raincoat? Uh, long story. It's so specific. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people. Cool, I'm seeing in the chat that um, a couple, a lot of people are from uh, places that are quite rainy. It is kind of rainy over here often. Yeah, well, it's pretty foggy. It, it should be. What do you, I think why? that's what <laughs> <laughs> Well, because we had those fires and everything. <coughs> oh, so okay. So it's probably, it, it's probably good. I thought you meant it should be like, um, I don't know, like well, geographically or something. But yeah, it has a reputation for being a bit rainy. I think yeah. around January it usually rains quite a lot. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll do some kind of... I don't want to sketch a lot. I'll just go and improvise something. Yeah, that's cool. When you improvise, do you ever find that you draw like the similar characters? Yeah, I don't like that. So I kind of force myself not to do that. Maybe okay. I'll do something in weird format like this. Oh, okay, cool. So right um, now... Uh, for those who can't see, uh, Roman is just increased the height of his artboard, so it's like really vertical now. Very vertical. Yeah. It's so cool. vertical. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to make a new brush, um, and I think today I'll try to experiment with mixing a couple of styles. So I'll do very thin, even line, and uh, something wide and blobby. Okay, cool. Just to see how they can work together. Yeah, cool. Um, Jason says, draw a Pikachu. Mm, I won't. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Cool. I'm sure if you if you need a picture of Pikachu, you can. You're well catered for in that department. You mean on just the internet? Via Google? Yeah. yeah. So. <coughs> yeah, I hope all of you guys in cold, rainy places keep warm. <laughs> Just like Elizabeth uh, mentioned in the chat. They're all indoors, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, I th you have to be watching this like on a, a device, like a computer, so yeah, yeah. hopefully. I, know. I mean, I guess you could be like outside in the park or something. <laughs> um, 
Um, some people are some saying, dedication. Some people are asking if you could draw if you could draw a horse. Um, all right, I'll, I'll <laughs> think about it. You know, yeah, if <laughs> if a horse lends itself. <laughs> right now, I'm just thinking about the. Yeah, I mean, it could it can be a horse. Why not? Be a person on a horse. There. So I'm just gonna put some jitter and things like that to make them a bit less uniform. Oh, cool. What are you drawing right now? The, the bottom of the umbrella? Uh, nothing. I'm just testing the brush. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. And now I'll draw something. What kind of uh, brush did you select? Uh, I just took a pencil, mechanical pencil, I think it was called, and then I modified it so it doesn't uh, have any uh, size change. Oh, cool. Uh, which I like. Ugh, I just um, so this way it can be like a proper mechanical pencil. Anyway, um, I always modify all the brushes. So I never just use whatever you get. Sweet. Do you? Um, I always use, uh, I have my favorites. Actually, I'm curious about how you set your brushes up. So like, I always, I use um, Kyle's brushes, Kyle Webster. Uh -huh. And I also started using Sid, Sid Wheeler's brushes. Um, well, I have, have some of Kyle's stuff. Um, I've known him for a long time when he was just starting this thing, and um, I but I, I modified all of them. It's, mm. They don't really fit my purposes in their default state. Yeah, they're a bit too nice. Oh, okay. I like things to be a bit messy and or or kind of purposefully digital. Oh, okay. You know, so his stuff is kind of the opposite of that. It's trying to be very natural. I yeah. Don't quite like it. So for, for me, for my stuff. For you know? me, I um, so th their brushes they they're always listed in I don't know the name. It's like the brush panel, mm -hmm. and I want them to be in a nice list on the side, and I want like only my top like ten brushes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how you can do that. Oh great. Um, where's what is that? Oh wait, that's kind of what I do. With yeah. Presets, and then. Um, I arrange them. The doesn't look like this. Is this a preset? It has to be. No, it's not. Uh, let's find it. No, uh, it has to be somewhere here. Uh, um, brushes. Oh, oh, tool presets. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. So you don't have any here, but yeah. you can make them. So you can make a ton of them and whatever, and then the ones that you really like, you put an exclamation mark first, oh, and then they're listed alphabetically. That's so interesting. So <laughs> that's how I do it. I always do it like if you go to, if you uh, where you clicked on presets, mm -hmm. if you view brushes, I'll resave it, and then okay. I rename it. Yeah, you, well, yeah. I have both. I have stuff here and I have stuff there. Yeah. And um, the stuff that's uh, in the preset is usually the kind of thing I don't use particularly often. Oh, okay. So the ones that I use all the time are on the right click. Oh, cool. Yeah, I feel like I'm learning something new every day. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Cool. Welcome to everyone just joining. It sounds like a lot of you guys are in kind of uh, cold areas because people are saying burr. Elizabeth says uh, mm -hmm. we're at negative nine degrees Celsius. That's so cold. What? Where is that? Yeah, where is that? Um, yeah, I hope you guys are staying warm. <coughs> um, so here I'm, I'll, I'll be doing things on different layers. Mm -hmm. Just so that later I can switch things on and off. Uh, I don't really intend to color it or anything like this. Oh, okay. Uh, at least not this part. So, 
but I do want to color the line. So I'll see how that goes. Right now I'm just using the same same line uh, color just to get it going, and then I'll figure it out when I when I decide on the color scheme. Cool. So, uh, what kind of character should we have? Um, like the opposite of yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so an an old man. Yeah. I guess. Or or a young young boy. Mm, well, yeah. Let's do an old man. Okay, cool. Sound is a bit low. Mm. Hmm. Maybe I'll shout. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this week, um, for those who are just joining us, we are celebrating illustration and digital painting. So we've got uh, Roman in the morning from nine to eleven Pacific time. And then after, we've got Jenny Yu, Corey Brickley, and Sophie Diao. So if you're a fan of digital painting, illustration, or any of these awesome artists, you should tune in uh, later on in the day, the day and check them out. Yep. <laughs> oh, cool. I like how tired she looks, or he. With the, uh, the under right. eye. Oh, I just want a boring brush. <laughs> hey, Madison from Seattle. So what does like an average day look like for you? Or like um, your typical day to day? I wake up um, with a feeling of dread <laughs> from troubled dreams <laughs> transformed into a giant insect. Oh, was that your dream? And then... Uh, like this? No, like it doesn't matter. And then I, uh, <laughs> you know, I have oatmeal and do a bit of yoga, and meditate. Oh, you meditate? Uh, cool. Yeah. Do you use? Uh, do you do it by yourself or do you? Do yeah, like I do guided? it by myself. Just me and the void. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I don't like those guided <laughs> things. I find them incredibly irritating. <coughs> really? Um, yeah, I get like I get the opposite of what you're supposed to. Yeah, mm. I get really angry. So. Wow. <laughs> so interesting. I use calm.com. Mm. The, I prefer to headspace because uh, I find the woman's voice is much more soothing than the Yeah, I don't like his guys. voice at all. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's what voice. an irritant. <laughs> but people like him. I heard he's some kind of celebrity. Like they recognize his voice <laughs> on the street and go, can you say something to me and I'll feel better. <laughs> uh, that would be creepy. What an irritant. Yeah, anyway. But then... <laughs> Then I, I either go to the studio or um, if I feel like drawing, uh, or I lie in bed reading uh, or writing. And then I work until about lunchtime. Usually I try to do my own stuff first. Okay. Uh, which doesn't always happen because it's you know, so much easier to just do commercial work. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's Instead to of get going. coming up with a novel, yeah. uh, you know. Um, and then um, after lunch, I usually just do stupid things, like, um, coloring. Please elaborate. Yeah, editing. <laughs> well, not stupid, but things that don't require full presence of the mind. Okay. And um, you know, I I read a lot and walk around. I, yeah. I do all my writing when I walk. So I was I was walking here and I wrote a story. There it oh, is. cool. This I, I wrote just uh, in the toilet before I came here. And not, you know, while attending to my needs, but um, on the sink. <laughs> on the sink that had, you see that? They have motivational sort of oh, posters. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh, um, someone asks, what kind of music do you like while you are working? Um, well, I... Thanks, Aisha. I almost exclusively listen to The Fall, 
which I may have mentioned yesterday. Oh yeah, you did mention that yesterday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I like I like a lot of things. I have a fairly eclectic taste in music, I suppose. Um, I like all things that are a little kind of rough around the edges and amateurish. Oh okay. I don't cool. like things that sound good. <coughs> Any kind of professionalism really find irritating. <laughs> um, so I like a lot of post-punk, um, kind of weird disco-y things, crowd rock, can. Okay. Um, some hip-hop. I like Cool Keys quite a lot. Um, cool. Yeah, we got, we got great lyrics. Um, yeah, okay, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I like many things. But the fall is like this overarching obsession that I have. Uh, is this like a recent thing or no it's from the 70s no I mean your obsession oh obsession yeah uh, no it's uh, I think I was well it's a long story because when I started listening to it I didn't really know English okay particularly so for me it's like I kind of learned English from that from listening to the, the fall oh cool which is sort of the worst way to learn English because it's incredibly uh, you know he sort of makes up words and mispronounces things, and it's, you know, it's, it's definitely on the more ex experimental and bizarre side of things. So it definitely influenced the way I write and uh, the way I think about the language in oh. general. You know? And when I, when I say to people who are aware of it, you know, well, I, I started to listen to it and it was like a, a kind of awareness of language as a um, as an audio force before the meaning and then the meaning is secondary and whatever and that was a very obvious influence on everything I write Cause, you know, I definitely um, and also I read an interview in Paris Review with I think Don DeLillo in the 70s and he said something exactly like what I said some week ago or whatever that I would definitely change the sentence to make it sound better and I would discard the meaning if it sounds better. Interesting. You know? um, so it's all about the sound. The cool. kind of words that, the combination of words that make you feel uh, like the whole fabric of linguistic communication has been shaken down. That's cool. So. Do you, so you feel like you take that approach in your work too? Uh, you mean in drawing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess. Um, well, certainly, <coughs> uh, I I embrace accident quite a lot, and um, I don't really think of myself as having a style, mm -hmm. and I don't ever want to have a style. Okay. So I see it more as a approach that's um, you know, informed by various other artists uh, who are mainly not visual artists so again like music and uh, literature and whatnot yeah so i remember when i was um just starting out and getting into like the editorial game mm -hmm. after working in tech like a lot of people from that world i guess told me that it was like really important to have a style yeah which like freaked me out right uh, I, sort I of so what is your how do you approach that um, you know, I think it's impossible to find a style. Okay. It just happens. I think this style is um, like a sum of your failures to do something else. Okay. So for me, it's a. Uh, I really like, uh, let's say, the cartoonist Jason, the Norwegian cartoonist. Okay. Um, he's in Franco Belt. Jason. You know, he does people with dog heads and all that. Okay. Anyway, he's good. So I always wanted to do a book like his book, but I can never manage it. And I'm glad I can't do it, because then any time I want to do a Jason book, I just do one of my books, which doesn't look like his at all. Yeah, doesn't yeah. doesn't read like his. So basically everything I do is a failure to plagiarize someone. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Um, that totally and Yeah, sense. and I'm definitely, I'm very opposed to the whole idea of self-expression in art, and I think it's all just... Um, collection of failures and repetitive 
attempts at something that is entirely impossible to achieve. Cool. Is that, is that too depressing for a nine? <laughs> no, <20? laughs> it's not. It's very real. Cool. Well, I don't think it should be sad. <coughs> you know, if you... Well, Shakespeare plagiarized, and he's supposed to be like the first, whatever. Yeah, I mean... You no, know, if you look at the early novels, like Don Quixote, everyone in the second <laughs> volume had read the first one. <laughs> People are saying deep stuff. Timothy says, haha, now we're all depressed. Oh, good. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I've been drawing his body 700 times in a row because I'm talking too much. Oh, okay. (laughs) Just focus on this. Yeah, no, but Madison says, uh, well spoken. Well, thank you, Madison. Yeah. Wow, cool. Um, Ahmed says, you are a profound person, Roman. I know. Real artist. Too too profound for my own good. (laughs) So, uh, on that note, um, if you're just joining us today... (laughs) Um, <clears throat> we have a contest uh, every day, so uh, the winner of the oh, contest sorry. will get to win a, a one-year Creative Cloud subscription. Um, <clears throat> and the theme for today is Rainy Day, as inspired by Jenny Yu. So um, as per the prompt, download and use Photoshop or Illustrator um, and draw an illustration around the theme of Rainy Day. And then uh, share your, a link to your artwork in the form at bit.ly slash rainy, rainy adobe. Um, and you can also find this info and the link in the contest tab, which is to the right of the chat tab. <coughs> yeah. We're also going to be uh, giving away um, a poster created on Adobe Live um, by other artists, uh, Robzilla, Jingwei, Christine Heron. So um, we're going to randomly give it away to someone in the middle of our stream. Um, and yesterday, we, the way it worked is we asked a question that reflected something that we discussed earlier in the stream, and then people had to type it into the chat, and then we randomly se- selected someone from that. So, um, you know, if you're interested in that, definitely pay attention and uh, get in on it when we do it. So, uh, be like, w- which one of the 1,200... Uh, modernist writers I mentioned in the last half hour. <laughs> Something incredibly specific. Like the Jason guy? Well, yeah, you just spoiled it. <laughs> now they can write it down. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, my bad. All three posters will go to one winner. So, that's very exciting. You get three posters. What are you going to do with all those posters? I know. <laughs> I know. Um, so, Devin actually has an interesting question. Uh, he, he asks... What slash who had the biggest impact on your art? And what gave you the push, ability, opportunity to do your own work and make a living from it? Well, that's quite a question. (laughs) (laughs) Seven questions for the price of one. Um, (laughs) Well, I think there's a pretty sharp separation between my... Well, semi-separation, I should say. uh, Between uh, my commercial work and my personal work. A question for you. Well, another do you, one. Do you <laughs> separate those two works on your like website? Uh, no, or, okay. I can't be bothered. Okay. I probably should. <laughs> but can't be bothered. Just, yeah. Okay. But I probably should. All right. Um, but also, it's so obvious. I feel like anyone who's familiar with me kind of knows my whole shtick. All right. That um, you know, if well, I if I, I sell out, I sell out. If I do my own work, it's there's um, no concession to anything. Oh, okay. You know? So, do you ever do commercial work where you feel like it's not even related to your current work? Or? Oh yeah, all the time. Okay. I mean, some of the it's, it's completely embarrassing, uh, but you know, what can you do? So what do you do in that situation where, like, would you add it to your portfolio, for example? Or? Uh, well, it depends on how embarrassing it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, there's not a lot of things that I've done that are just horrible. Um, but I can think of a few. Okay. Um, but, you know, most of the time it's just, like, nice, cute things like this, uh, which I think has very nominal value, you know. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not embarrassed about it. It's just... Not a nice drawing. 
Yeah, I mean, no like, one, no one's telling you like you have to use this color, or, like whatever. You right, know? right. Or like move it over well, here. Well, the thing is, I don't really draw for myself like this. Oh, okay. No, I don't really find any enjoyment in drawing. Oh, okay. Um, I don't see myself as a as a drawer. Is that a word? I don't know. Drawer. Yeah. A person who draws. Well, you know, if I I remember meeting some of my friends uh, back when I had friends, and. Uh, <laughs> And we would have sort of drawing nights, and people would just whip out a bit of paper and start drawing something. Wow, cool. And like, if you look at my sketchbook, yeah. it's Can all, we look at it? <laughs> it's Are we all to? words. The GoPro? It's just like, look at all these sketches. It's nothing. Yeah. Um, Wait, this is, do you mind? No, I don't care. Oh, cool. Wait, that's so awesome. It, yeah, it has a bit of drawing. Wait, you should turn it to oh. the camera. <laughs> but it's, this, I was just writing today. So, it's it's almost all words. Can you read your writing? Very, with some difficulty. Okay. I mean, yeah. There, there's a lot that actually I, I couldn't decipher, so I had to rewrite it. Oh, okay. Which is also like an artistic constraint in a way. Yeah. So, it's you, like you write so badly that you have to rewrite it when you do it. Yeah, it's like that guy Once who... I, you know, I spilled some tea on my manuscript, and then I had to rewrite that bit. Oh, uh, so that's kind of excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, anyway, that that kind of thinking was a big influence from, again, things like The Fall. It's like he has a song called Paintwork. Who's he, The Fall? Um, well, he's, he's basically like one guy and whoever he hangs out with. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. For the last 45 years. Okay. <laughs> he started when he was 16, and now he's uh, 60. And he's still doing it. Sweet. And there's you know more than 50 people in the band throughout the history. So, and they, you know they've gone from punk to some kind of dubstep to whatever. Um, and yeah, so he was listening to a demo take of that song um, in his hotel room on a dictaphone and then he accidentally pressed record instead of stop and okay. he recorded a bit from the <coughs> television that was playing and that ended up in the final mix oh cool and you know that's the uh, i like that was a huge influence on me that particular incident and that story because um, a normal musician would just go oh well i screwed up let's do another take but he went okay well i screwed up that will be in the actual album. That's cool, yeah. yeah and for some people, God, that's crazy. Uh, to me, that's a sign of genius. <laughs> um, Kendra says she also writes a lot in her sketchbook, and she loves finding out there are others like that, too. Oh, good. Yeah. Keep, keep writing. I think it's good for the soul. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of, most of the stuff that I write doesn't go anywhere. So it's not necessarily notes for stories or anything like that. So, would you consider this to be like, um, like a narrative, or is it like journaling for you? Like, do you? Well, ever definitely write? not journaling. <laughs> okay. Well, just just go, had to ask. I go, you dear, know. dear diary. Today <laughs> I did nothing. Um, it's actually a reference <laughs> to something. Okay. Um, so, which brings <clears throat> me to Daniel Harms, who was another big influence on me. So he was a Russian. Um, he was mainly known as a poet, but I think his uh, stories are actually much more interesting than his poems. Okay. And um, he had a kind of diary that he called the Blue Notebook, in which he wrote uh, different entries. So he would write every day. He would try to write every day. Um, and he was fairly successful as a children's book uh, writer, but throughout his entire lifetime he had published only two poems. Okay. And no stories, but he kept writing. So that alone is kind of a big uh, influence on me. The idea that you don't really need an audience or you don't need people to like what you do. Mm, um, that's cool. And one of the things that he wrote was this very short entry. And uh, it goes like this. Today I wrote nothing. Doesn't matter. And that was, you know, when I first read it, when I was... You know, 18 or something. I thought, ah ha ha, it's silly. And then when I reread it maybe a few years ago, I thought, that's actually really profound. 
Is what is he talking about? That he wrote nothing? That what doesn't matter? That he wrote nothing? Or the nothing that he wrote? I mean, he did write a lot. But he did write nothing. something. Mm -hmm. He wrote, I wrote nothing. Mm. So that is written. So it's a kind of living contradiction and also um, quite a profound philosophical statement if you think about it. You know. So that sparked uh, me to write that book about doing nothing that's coming out next year. Oh, cool. That was a blog. The French um, book that you were working on? No, no, it's a... Uh, Chronicle is putting it out in, in April. It's called uh, On Doing Nothing, Finding Inspiration in Idleness. Wow, cool. Yeah, I didn't want to have a subtitle, but you know, <laughs> like they try to sell books, <coughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I like the, uh, oh, someone, Eric says, this is how, that's how Kafka was so good. Around 90% of his work is still unknown. Uh, yeah, well, I wouldn't say he's totally uh, obscure, but... Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Kafka is still kind of underread, I think, considering his status and the influence that he had. Yeah. Was your s insect dream a reference to his... Yeah. <laughs> For those who are just tuning in, Roman made a reference to a dream. Oh, that let's not <laughs> milk it. <laughs> Where he um, dreamt he turned into an insect. Sounding like a support group or something. No. <laughs> I mean, just in case someone is tuning in right now and they have zero context yeah and we're just talking well, about that's good. insects that, that's <laughs> even better let's alienate as many of them <laughs> as we can anyway i should get on with it <laughs> well no, so far we have the it. guy and now we have a, we need a horse someone requested a horse yeah someone did request a horse yeah. people keep requesting horses i don't um, know I, do you like horses I think horses are okay. Um, <laughs> I like them as animals. You don't mind them. If you see a horse, you don't fly into fury. <laughs> I mean, I get really sad sometimes when I think about horses because I think humans don't treat them very well. Yeah. In that regard. Well, they're a bit pointless. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, horses. Yeah. I guess they're, they've outlived their purpose a bit. Oh, really? Don't want to sound cruel, <clears throat> but... I mean... Why, why do we need horses nowadays? From a human lens. Well, yeah, exactly. Not absolutely from, like, a well, yeah. existential... I mean, from existential lens, we really don't need humans. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the first thing to get rid of, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> sorry, Adam. Um, we don't mean to be so depressing. Oh, God. <laughs> I think this is just our vibe. I don't really see it as particularly depressing. Yeah, I mean, um, life, I think, is much more depressing than anything I can say. Yeah. So. I actually think this is really funny. <laughs> uh, Mitch says, agreed. Yeah. <laughs> it is real talk. Real. <clears throat> actually, Nicholas, um, Nicholas uh, raises a good point, which is first world country doesn't need horses, but other countries still do. Yeah, that's true. I yeah. guess we're, we're talking from uh, ivory towers. Yeah, totally. In Photoshop, yeah. <laughs> I, I apologize for my statement. <laughs> no, don't Horses are essential. <laughs> that, that's why I'm going to draw one as a tribute to all the, the horses and all the hard work that they do. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are funny. What are they saying? It's something weird. We're just, we're just talking about horses right now. Right. I don't really know how to draw a horse. Yeah. But that brings me <laughs> to a point I always make to my... St oh my god, why do I make it so big? <laughs> There's no way I can finish it. All right. <laughs> um, you know, if you don't know how to draw a horse, you just go and draw it. You know? Can you uh, <laughs> expand on that? <laughs> well, it's not going to look like a horse, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. But it's going to be unique. <laughs> Actually, I think that's more important than uh, <clears throat> just looking up a horse. Mark was wondering um, if you were going to grab a horse reference. No, well, that's exactly what I'm not going to do. I'm going to do a weird, strange, uh, unhorsey horse. But I won't. I, I yeah, I never use reference for anything ever. Um, well, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> I use it 
kind of very, very selectively. So if I have to draw something specific, I would draw it from my head. Mm -hmm. And then I might look at a reference and kind of look at it, observe it, think about it, and then go back and look at it from, from the head again. Because so you need that separation. You need to make a mistake. Well, otherwise you're just replicating something. Yeah. Maybe you could look yeah. at it before you go to sleep. And then go to sleep hmm. and forget about it. And kind of yeah. have it your dream Well, you know, that's it. why I do these walks every day. When I walk the same roads and I just stare at things. Um, and if I go and travel, I don't really take a lot of pictures. Because uh, I want to misremember it. Um, Durga has a great question. Mm -hmm. She asks, what advice would you give to beginners? Well, every day someone asks this question. <laughs> well, I think it's really relevant. Cause yeah, I a guess lot of so. People, um, it's quite, quite loose. <coughs> um, quite what? Loose. I mean, beginners in, in what? You know, it depends on whether you want to do like editorial or something. Well, I think if, if I were to give general advice, I would say the main thing is to consume a lot of art and to copy other people. Mm, kind of like what like you were saying earlier. Blatantly. Um, copy for yourself, not put it up somewhere or whatever. Mm. But just take a picture you like and, and do it. And, just, and then crumple and throw it away. Cool. I think that's the best way to learn. Because then... Um, Many people have said it. I think most famously, famously Picasso, and I'm sure someone has said it before him, that the style is the sum of mistakes that you make uh, when you try to copy someone. And, you know, and he copied the hell out of people. So. Cool. It's this idea, like, uh, we are all trying to find the source text or image, the source of the inspiration. But, of course, it's impossible. It, because it, yeah. it's an endlessly self-referential loop and you'll just find more things and more things and more things. And then you go back to the prehistoric age and there'll be something that references something that's been done yesterday. So it, it's always a loop like this. You know, it's like Mallarmé's idea of the book, which is a sort of thing that's not a book, but that contains all the knowledge in the universe. And it's basically something that you can never aspire to, but you can still... Um, kind of blindly bang your head against this idea and while you're banging your head something new comes out as a byproduct of that and that byproduct would be your art anyway I think so <laughs> cool well that's a great answer to that, that question is that profound enough? I guess it is really profound oh. people are saying real talk oh my god so um, what are you doing right now in the piece that you're working on? Um, well I should be drawing a horse okay be, be a horse. I'll be like a Hans RP horse. You know him? No, but I like the tail. Uh, Hans Arp, Jean Arp. He <coughs> was a Bauhaus dude that I really like. Um, he also has a had a wife, Sophie Taber Arp, and okay. they they're both really great. Um, they also did some wonderful collaborations. I like the the cutest artist couple you'll ever see. Um, and she died pretty young and he um, completely changed his style after that. He became more of a sculptor. Anyway, I had a pretty fascinating life and uh, I love their body of work. I think they're, you know, one of the more fun and playful of the abstract artists that you will find in the 20th century. Uh, completely free of pretensions. Cool. Yeah, they're associated with you know dadas and whatnot. Boop, boop, boop. Here's the horse. Oh. <coughs> anyway, so the idea here is to do this bit in just lines, yeah. or like skeleton lines almost, <coughs> and then to have everything else in a completely different style. Oh, okay. So, um, do you have thoughts around how you're gonna, uh, what you're gonna put in the like top part of the canvas? Well, some trees, I imagine, and rain. <laughs> but 
I'm not quite sure how I will do it. We'll see. Maybe this will be a main. You know, I always want to do like a genre, a very straightforward story. I was reading uh, Leonora Carrington. Okay. Uh, who's mainly known <coughs> as a painter, but recently her stories were also published. Oh, that's so cute. Are you drawing this, the, the head now? It doesn't look like a horse <laughs> at all. That's so cute. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, I thought, well, I should do something like that. Just uh, a story about a messenger. And it's all sort of dark soulsy forest and goblins and whatever. Oh, so that's what you want to do for this illustration? Well, maybe. But the thing is I, well, I always do, want to do something. Oh, I'll do a detective story. Or I'll do a, a horror story. Or a, some something quite simple. And then I get carried away and it turns into some, you know, the usual thing that I do. So, I, also I think like I, just, I, get, I get bored of myself quite a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that totally resonates with me. <laughs> <laughs> Who dares say this is not a horse? Anyway, Diglett there's spotted. A, there's a horse. Indeed. Pretty spot on. Now, if I looked at some reference, you know, in. I may not have come up with quite the same. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is an awesome horse. I love it. I know. Thank you. Horses have hoofs, of course. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm heard. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Oh, this is di disturbing. Imagine if horses had feet. They do have feet. Oh, you mean like, like human feet. angled feet? Yeah. No, human feet <coughs> with five toes and hair. Yeah. Oh, I have hair. In fact, they have <laughs> more hair than we do. So I don't know what I'm on about. We do need a name for this horse. Okay, maybe someone can suggest a name. Yeah, why don't uh, someone uh, feel free to make... Uh, Name suggestions for this yeah. this horse. For my lovely, lovely horse. <laughs> Running through the fields. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think Nigel is a good name for a horse. Nigel, yeah. So I think it, what's cool is uh, you're, you, you're doing a lot of rotating the canvas um, to kind of get, like, the gesture in, uh, in your drawing? Yeah, I guess um, I never even think about it. But, yeah, my stuff is very gestural. Mm -hmm. So... And that's um, just pressing R? And yeah. That's a shortcut? Like, cool. And then escape. Yep. To, to and that. escape. As we established yesterday. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, some people... Not everyone is like... No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying okay. that we shouldn't say it again. I was just... Okay. Um, oh, cool. We got a lot of cool... Um, Name suggestions. Okay. Wilfredo, yep. Gloom, Gloom. <laughs> Donald Horse, um, Nathan, <laughs> um, Sphinx Horse. Nathan I like. Yeah. Friend Lee, L-E-E, -E, like my last name. Mm. Um, Happy, Nigel, like Nigel. Mm. <laughs> I can see a same immersion. Yeah. Okay. I'll color the lines a bit. And perhaps the umbrella can be colored in. So would you ever... Um, oh, cool. You're going to do the yeah. expand thing again. Yeah, I'm going to expand. I don't know why I do this, but I find it satisfying to type things. Yeah. Instead of um, just finding them in the menu. So you're... So to clarify... Feels like you're in one of those sci-fi things and you're... Yeah. Expand. Computer, expand. So you're doing you're doing W for a quick wand selection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you're doing expand. 
which you just typed right. in. And then it goes uh, between the lines like this. Right. So that, and then okay. I'm creating a new layer and just putting it here. Oh, cool. You drew a rectangle. Yeah. Well, it can be any shape because yeah. I have selected. Cool. I have, yeah, I have some fondness for rectangles when it comes to this. Yeah. I don't know why, but I always use a rectangle to color things. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's kind of strange. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> I don't I know why. I do that, but then I'll do um, G for gradient. Oh. Yeah. Gradient? Yeah. <laughs> like, um... Fair enough. Yeah, like I'll draw like a gradient, but it's not a gradient because my mm. I drew I draw it really small. Right, so it's just more as like a command. It's more like a paintbrush, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, well. That's cool. Learning something new. Mm -hmm. Photoshop uh, shortcuts. Okay, so let's do the background. Oh, I have Perfect. a clock here. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can go with this whole blue seam. What do I have on the sketch? I can't see anything. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. So at any point, would you start combining the layers that you've drawn? Or do you not really care about that stuff? Oh, um, well, if it gets heavy, then you can't do that. Yeah, mm. um, yeah right now I just want to put together some loose shapes to kind of delineate the landscape. And then I can edit it into some greater coherence. Dun, dun, dun. Ah. Someone forgot to close this one and this one. Okay. Oh, there's something satisfying about doing this. Oh yeah, but then you have to you have to zoom out though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a worthy sacrifice. <laughs> uh, Olga wants to ask if you could explain what you're doing as you're going. Um, well, I'm you know I'm selecting areas, then uh, choosing expand, which expands the selection to cover. Um, inside the line work mm -hmm. and this way you don't have this accidental uh, little marks white marks you know that can be a bit unsavory yeah so now i can uh, color lock this layer which means that anything i do will be only on that layer right and i can uh, change the color a bit so i can make it a bit more yellowy So the way I color is I would just pass random numbers on the keyboard and choose colors two, and it sounds 20% more blue. So it, it's a little odd, I suppose. Okay, so but you're like combining a lot of colors. Yeah. Cool. Um, but I like this uh, very mechanical approach. So it's almost like, uh, again, solving a puzzle. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'm colorblind, so I don't really, oh, really? see a lot of these colors. Oh. But, um, no, I'm not, I'm not totally colorblind. But, for instance, I have, when I was passing a driver's exam in Russia, I had to bribe them. <laughs> but in Russia, you have to bribe people for anything, can so you, it doesn't really say much. Can you tell between, like, green and red? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, um, if it's a very light, um, say, pink and yellow, then I might confuse them, or okay. I might just not see any difference between them. But uh, I don't really mind. I think uh, it's not about registering color, it's about the effect their combination has on you. So even if you don't see it, you can still feel it. So I think what you're doing right now is really cool, because you are going through and uh, fixing all like the little stray marks, but then also adding in like a little bit of texture. Mm, yeah, so, well, I enlarged the brush, or I should just take another brush, I guess. What is this? Um, yeah, I should have brought my own computer. <laughs> this is a, a good constraint, though. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what, that was my thought, that I'll use something I'm not familiar with. Yeah. Uh, like those this one is all right. I like this one. Those little wispy marks yeah. are, like, nice at the end of, right. at the bottoms of the clouds. 
Mm-hmm. You think they're clouds? Oh yeah, what are they? I don't know. Uh, I think they're mounds. Mounds, mounds. of, um, you know. <clears throat> I'm not sure what a mound is, to be honest. <laughs> but these are mounds. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm seeing in the chat... Um, it's like abstract landscape. I'm seeing in the chat a bunch of... Uh, bunch of people are talking about the contest um mm. so if you're just joining us now um we are running a contest to have the chance to win a uh, one-year creative cloud subscription um and uh, the theme for today is rainy day so using photoshop or illustrator uh draw an illustration based around this theme and then share a link to uh your artwork in the form which is also linked to in the contest tab I think currently we only have a few um, submissions, so uh, it's a good, good opportunity to uh, get in on the contest if you're interested. Mm-hmm. And you can join Roman and the other artists uh, in this rainy day endeavor. Um, here's a here's a cool thing. Yeah. So I'm duplicating all my line layers, and I'm merging them. Now I can take off this layer, and now I have all these layers in one. Mm-hmm. And hang on, yeah. And what that allows me to do is I can make selections inside it, uh, inside all of my active layers, mm-hmm. you know, without having to separate them. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's a little trick that I discovered, and then I can kind of go into that layer and make this to close it. Right. You know? uh, but it doesn't matter because this layer is only used for coloring and I will just turn it off. Right. And likewise here I can close this. And uh, let's say here. And now I can select all this business. And perhaps I can again expand, turn this layer off, uh, press Command H or Control H, which hides the line. And now I can go over that layer and have a oh, cool. white here. So I don't know why this matters, but anyway. Anyway, now uh, shape is kind of better on can be semi-transparent like this and did you leave the um her his or his inside there pocket or his inside uh leg yeah Um, i did it on purpose just to make it look like i messed up (laughs) i do put a lot of thought into doing things badly but um, now that i look at it i'm not quite sure if it's good I think it's all right. Looks cool. Yeah, it kind of it, well, it looks like a nice mistake. And sometimes I do go out of my way to make mistakes or make things that look like mistakes, which is a bit silly, but yeah, why not? Like uh, if I look at this little pocket, I think, well, maybe this can also have something going on, or the hair of the horse. So I can sample this color and put it here. Now it's a little more complete, I guess. It's always hard when you do this sort of, um, when you have line work and coloring. If you look at something like Tenten um, or any classical Franco-Belgian comics, well, they used watercolors to color them rather than Photoshop. So all these edges would be a little more natural. But when you use flat coloring, it gets a bit strange. Of course, there are different ways of dealing with that without making it just egregiously different in style. Yeah. You know? So are you trying to... Well, I'm smoothing in the lines, so it's, it's more of a shape gotcha. rather than a sharp transition between line and shape. Um, anywho. So we have that. Um, 
Maybe I can play around with gradients, actually, because I hate gradients. Oh, okay. Um, and my students always go, ah, don't use gradients, because he's going to complain about it. Well, that's cool that but you... But uh, uh, I do think that you can use gradients. It's just it's very hard to do it. Yeah. To do it well. Okay. So I'm gonna Why do you think that? Well, because they're extremely uniform. Hmm. So... If you have something hand drawn and then you have something like this, it just looks kind of garish, you know. Yeah, that could be on purpose though. It can be. So yeah. I'm thinking. Um, perhaps I can kind of mix in a bit of this. Hmm. Mm, or the other way. Maybe they can be more light. Yeah, it sort of works. Okay, well, let's keep going with this. Yeah, it looks cool. It's all about experimenting. Experimenting, I indeed. Yeah. Um, so, do we ever decide on a name for this horse? I don't know. What did they decide? Um, I don't. I don't Nigel think. Nigel, with a nigh. Na yeah, Nigel. Yeah, With a Nigel. <laughs> Sweet Nigel. What kind of brush are you using right now? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's called chalk. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it was on this computer. I don't know who made it. I imagine Kyle. <laughs> Is he actually here? I don't know. Mm. Hmm. Anyway. So there we go. Uh, now, okay, let's do some, um, some happy trees. So for trees, I can let's find some other brush that I haven't used yet. Probably not this. Oh, now it's oh, snowing. That's cool. Ah, stop! Escape. Now they look like rocks. Yeah. Your uh, blobs. It is a cool effect. Nathan says this horse is awesome. Oh, well, thank you, Nathan. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna tone down the brush a bit because it's a little too hardcore. Oh, cool. Can you kind of walk us through what you're doing? It's well, I'm just turning off things that make it interesting okay. and I make it more boring. Oh, okay. So it's more uniform. Ah. Um, And uh, yeah, maybe it can be uh, like the a little bit in the style of the Japanese woodblock prints. Oh, cool! But not quite. <laughs> I use keyboard quite a lot, actually. Yeah, me too. Life. Yeah. What do you do with it? Uh, I have a ton of customized keyboard shortcuts, like oh, we were talking really? about yesterday. So what what do you shortcut? Uh, B e <laughs> what do you cut short? Those are not cu custom, but like, you know, B, E, V, B which are e brush, eraser, and then, like, selection. Okay, um, well, they're by default, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, R, rotate, uh, C, crop, which is, like, my escape mm. when you're rotating. And then um, uh, I also do something. So I use layer styles a lot. Layer uh, styles? Sorry, blending modes a lot. Like uh, Okay. Yeah, I can see that in your work. Oh, cool. Yeah, and also um, layer styles, too. So, like... So what's layer styles? If, uh... If I have like a color overlay or something, mm -hmm. I don't know. If I wanted to like, if I drew all the different borders like you, and then I wanted to make them all red, I would just make them red. Hmm. Um, never, but instead of doing that. instead of doing copy layer style and then paste layer style, which you have to right click for, mm -hmm. I set it to Command Shift C is copy, and then Command Shift V is paste. So like, um, usually I have it on copied to. Uh, Overlay, mm -hmm. and then when I do a lot of like shading and stuff, I'll just make a new layer, which is Command N for me, and then I'll do Command Shift V, which is paste yeah. overlay, and then I think I made this. I'm not sure if it's default. Then Command H, which is clip 
make a clip clipping mask um, to the bottom layer, and then it creates a shadow. Yeah, it's, wow, it's this very, got really nerdy. <laughs> yeah, it's very like, and then it's all like on my left hand. Yeah, this is going beyond my understanding already. Okay. Yeah, so I I try to keep it like right hand is just drawing, and then left hand is like keyboard stuff. Well, it sounds like you're very efficient with this. So, yeah, I got it. I, I think the moral of the story is whatever works for you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm very blunt in my approach. Um, I'm not very clever in terms of like, finding interesting solutions or anything like that. I really like your trees, though. Mm. They're so cool. They're really spooky. Oh, they're very straightforward. You know. They're not straightforward. They're bendy. Well, fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, to answer your an question, uh, Mazer, we are working on a um, awesome uh, rainy day theme. Um, so you can see Roman right now is drawing a uh, a, a curious duo of a <laughs> a uh, character and a lion. Uh, sorry, a lion, a horse, a how, horse. How could you mistake this beautiful creature for a lion? A horse. It's clearly a horse. <laughs> a all, horse the, all the snake. horses that I've seen in my life went into this the day. We could finally use my. Yeah, yeah. A um, a wonderful horse named Nigel. A lovely horse. Um, and they're going through this uh, forest. Yeah. Yes. So far, it's <laughs> a forest. Can be something else. Yeah. Maybe some kind of. Marshy swampland. I think if I were a horse and someone told me it looked like a lion, it would be a compliment. No, it depends on what you aspire for. That's true. Uh, I mean, I think com being compared to a horse rather than like, uh, well, yeah, like a grasshopper. For for humans, it, horse horsiness has bad connotation. If you say, I met a girl the other day, looks like a horse. Probably not gonna think it's a compliment. I imagine. I mean, different, different, uh, I mean, some different people opinions. might like horses. Yeah, horses yeah. are beautiful. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> that is the theme. I think they're fine. Which is rainy day. They're, they're all right. So, um, if if you uh, are also interested in creating uh, a rainy day illustration, you can also enter our contest for the day, which is to. Uh, um, for a one-year subscription of Creative Cloud. And uh, the rules are pretty simple. You can check it out in the uh, contest tab, which is right next to the chat tab on the right. Does it have to have a horse? No, the horse, I think, is optional. Okay. But if you want to draw a horse, why not? It's optional, but suggested. <laughs> optional, but welcome. So the contest ends uh, close to the end of the stream. Um, um, more info to come in the chat from our admin. This brush called Erodible Point 2, which sounds like a Hollywood movie. Cool. <laughs> Erodible Point. The contest result will be declared um, before the end of the stream. So we're gonna. This stream is gonna end at nine, and then sorry, at eleven uh -huh. Pacific time, which is in about an hour. Um, and then after that, uh, Jenny Yu will be coming on at eleven Pacific time. So we'll probably end the contest before then, and then uh, decide the results. You know, maybe at like ten fifty or so. Uh, well, I'm gonna add some grassy detail. Cool. In the meantime. Is this using the erodible point brush? No. I don't, I don't like erodible point too. <laughs> I, I sort of took too many liberties with the plot line. I see. Yeah. And that daemon was excellent though. What? Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna add some little details. Awesome, I see that some people have finished their submissions and oh. are submitting them. It's so exciting. How impressive. Yeah, and congrats to eSoto for receiving their uh, one year activation code for Adobe Creative Cloud. Well, from yesterday? No, I think it was just in general. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, 
Also, does this character have a name that you're working on? Um, no. I don't really, I don't like names. Oh, okay. I, I find. When I write stories, that's usually the, the most difficult thing for me. I see. Um, no, I was, I was in Angoulême <coughs> in, in France this summer. And I had this uh, talk with um, Jason Shiga, who's uh, another cartoonist, uh, author of Demon, which is a really strange comic book, um, and other, many other comic books. Well, we talked on how he reuses the same character for different books, and you know, when one of these books is clearly for children, and the other one is definitely not for children. Um, overtly so. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> but it's pretty demented. And um, I kind of thought it's really strange to do that. But it, well, he told me he has a hard time coming up with a new character design. And so, yeah, that actually makes sense. And I said to him, well, I have a hard time coming up with names. So I would reuse names, but for different characters. And he thought that's very strange. So, for instance, I have, um, you know, I once met a man called Peter Hall. I don't okay. really remember anything about him. Okay. But I just thought, it's kind of a nice name. Okay. Because it doesn't mean anything, um, you know. And then at some point, I had to come up with a name. Okay. For a character. And I thought, well, I can't call something completely anonymous, like John Smith. Okay. Because that drives too much attention to itself. Okay. But I can't uh, do something extremely specific, like uh, jiggly bottom fluff hair. Because that's, <laughs> sort of, again, drives too much attention <laughs> to itself. So. And then I remember the name Peter Hall, and I thought, that's perfect. That's a, like a great, meaningless name. Okay. And then I did another story, and I also had to name someone. Okay. And then he also became Peter Hall. <laughs> so now I have about six Peter Halls. They're all totally different. And... You know, I never, I never seen this guy again, but I kind of like the idea that at some point he might pick my book, yeah, and see himself in it, and then look into it and realize that he's in all of my books. And that probably will be disturbing. Yeah. But cool. Anyway, now, now it's just kind of a personal challenge to just put him in every single book. This could be Peter Hall. Where? This dude. Oh uh, yeah. Well, so let's say this is Peter Hall. Yeah. Well, that segues nicely into um, our random giveaway. Oh. Um, so uh, every show that we're doing, um, we will be giving away three posters that have been created on Adobe Live by uh, other really talented artists, and you can see uh, see them in the background. So uh, that's Rob Zilla, Jing Wei, and Christine Heron. Um, and it is about that time to randomly give away... Um, these posters now to someone in the chat. So we're gonna think of a question to post to the chat that uh, reflects, you know, something we've discussed, and then um, you'll respond in the chat, and then we'll randomly pick someone based off of that. So I was thinking. So yesterday, I think our question was too easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but maybe that's that's fine. Maybe you know, warming up. Right. Um, so we we should try to think of like a something hardcore. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so one How many times I scratched my head? <laughs> one idea I had um, was... Yeah, I was actually going to ask... So Isoto suggested asking for the name of the horse. Well, did we decide on that? We, uh, I think we, <laughs> light, we lightly discussed it and uh, right. mentioned the final name a few times. And there are also a few different potential spellings. Wow, I really like what you did with that gradient there. Right, right so uh, basically a little depth. anything they say can be potentially the right answer. Yeah, oh, people are already writing it. Okay, so, okay, well, okay let's come up with another one. <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep coming up with different questions to... Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, hmm. What is my favorite color? <laughs> Although we didn't talk about that. Didn't talk about that. It'll be uh, um, not a very good question. Yeah. Okay, people are already r responding, even though we uh, did not officially ask the question yet. Which, which one? Uh, the horse question. Oh, the name. Okay. 
Uh, now people are responding what they think your favorite color is. Oh, God. So uh, let's come up with a, a, good, a good question. A good question. Yeah. What is my second favorite color? <laughs> Uh, let me think. Hmm. What is my least favorite color? What did we talk about? Oh, the usual. <laughs> Despair. Despair. How... What would I do when I wake up? Oh, okay. How I have oatmeal and whatever. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um... Should we say that? that then? Why don't we do the horse question? Yeah, let's do the horse question. Yeah. So, uh, all right, everyone, we're gonna ask the question for real now. Um, let's. Uh, so, the question is, what is the name of the horse that we decided on earlier in the chat, and yeah. we've mentioned it a few times. And what and is the horse's occupation? <laughs> being a horse. And uh, are you saying that a horse can't be anything else? A horse. The horse could be a lion. Yeah. So uh, put the name of the the horse in the chat, and then we're going to randomly select someone to win uh, the Lovely Prince by Robzilla, Jing Wei, and Christine Heron. A lovely, lovely prince. Lovely prince and a Running lovely horse. through the field. Yeah. So uh, getting a bunch of great entries, a lot of uh, active, active entries. Are there any that are... Very, very wrong in a funny way. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to reveal them because... Yes. Are they offensive? No, because uh, then it'll make it more obvious which one is correct. Oh, right. But I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do it like yeah. after. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sweet. So just uh, get, your, misty. get those responses in for a chance to enter our giveaway. So I really like what you're doing here with... Uh, yeah, I decided to mist it up. Yeah. Um, this way I don't have to draw the background. Oh, sweet. It's very clever. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and it feels really like... Uh, it feels like foggy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're in San Francisco. A city of fog. Sweet. Thank you guys for the uh, active uh, responses for the question for the giveaway. Someone suggests the horse name would be Ramon. <laughs> okay. Could be a Roman horse. Yeah. Liana says she's working on her rainy day drawing. That's fun. Okay, well, concentrate. <laughs> Stop chatting. <laughs> Congratulations to Maximilian Troitcher. You win uh, the three prints. Hmm. And for those who um, didn't win, don't worry, you'll get another chance both tomorrow and then also both tomorrow with Roman during our uh, morning, early morning segment. Our final session. Yeah, uh, day three and also uh, later in the day with the other three guests. So just tune in and um, you might get a chance to win. Sweet, so in about five minutes or so, I'm gonna just start queuing up some of the awesome contest entries. Okay. And um, I will wrap up this thing. Oh, no, you can keep working. Um, yeah. I just want to... Well, I'm tired anyway. <laughs> oh, I like how you interpreted the, the tops of the trees. Yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> and I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> well, it's cool that you're using the opacity in such a way. Yeah, well, it, it may look like I'm not doing anything. But, well, <laughs> but I am very subtly adjusting it as I go along. Yeah. And so, well, it's the same when I draw with a brush. It looks like I'm just not paying any attention. But it's, uh, I'm doing a lot of movements that are, that have become second nature. Yeah. Well, like, also sometimes just doing something that's really simple is, like, very difficult. Oh, it's the worst. 
Yeah. It's much easier, I think, to do something elaborate. Yeah, totally. And the book that I'm doing now, it's just... Uh, well, yesterday I did this elaborate scene of a person standing in the middle of the supermarket. And I spent three hours drawing it. And then I deleted the whole thing and redrew it in about 12 lines. And that may seem like a waste of time, but, you know, to do these 12 lines, I had to first... Yeah. Mess up and do this very overdone drawing, you know. You know, the stuff that you throw away is as much part of the final product as the actual final project. Totally. Oh, we've got some. Of course, really it's hard to think of it this way while while you're doing it, because everything just looks like a mistake. We've got some really awesome. You can't really expect to have immediate hindsight. Well, it wouldn't be hindsight. It would be front side. <laughs> Indeed. Horsey metaphors. Horsey metaphors. How did you go about thinking about which colors to choose for this? Well, to be honest, I choose the sort of color that I usually choose. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you originally choose these colors I remember it was a stormy day in stormy 1978 day in late December I found the colors no um, I don't know I have a pretty specific taste I think in terms of coloring well I remember long ago when I was first trying to break out of my color scheme I did this uh, I was doing this thing, I think, for New Yorker, and uh, I thought, all right, enough. I've done, <laughs> I've done four identical illustrations, <laughs> color-wise. Okay. I'm gonna do something totally different, and I spend uh, six, seven hours just picking colors from scratch, and then uh, I looked at it, and it looks exactly like something I did two weeks ago. And I realized that it's more of that that process is very similar or um, my taste is very specific and I think that's probably the biggest thing about being colorblind is well maybe not maybe it's a taste issue I do really dislike bright colors mm. and um, not really bright but rather saturated mm. uh, so just aesthetically like I hate sunny days uh, they make me kind of unhappy you know for me, like when it's rainy and gloomy and cloudy, I'm actually pretty upbeat. Oh, cool! You know, it or not. So when this, it's this sunny, it thing. feels uh, oppressive to me. Yeah. Um, also, it hurts me to see other people happy. <laughs> so, Liana asked a really interesting question, which was um, what you're doing to customize the brushes, and I think we discussed earlier that you always kind of tweak the brushes a little uh yeah so the only thing i did on this brush is i went here and the original spacing was like this okay it's terrible and then i simply reduced the spacing got it so and i didn't do anything else with this particular brush for the other ones i i mainly just switch off things okay <laughs> so i make it more digital and unconvincing cool and it's my <coughs> semi-firm conviction that whatever medium you're using uh, you should take advantage of it and um, if you're doing digital then it should look digital you know yeah um although there's something of course to be said for uh, sort of brushes that look natural and help you fake things but at the same time you know, it, it's still, I think it's much more fun to actually take advantage of that medium and do something that you absolutely cannot do mm. something else. So I can't do stuff like that with paint. Right. So that's why I'm doing it. And then when I go into paint, I would do something completely different usually. So I, right now you are, uh, you made a new layer and you clipped yeah. it to the blue. Flavor. Yeah, I did a mask layer and then I took the color from the trees and I applied multiply to it. So it's not quite the same layer, but it has the same um, context, I could say. Yeah. Right? 
And so what the clipping mask does is that it clips the pixels that you see to the layer below. Yeah, that's right. So it's a, again, you can only use it in Photoshop or, well, or digital applications like Photoshop. Um, cool. So if I were to paint, you know, I don't know if I could get that effect. It certainly wouldn't be as precise. It would have to involve a lot of masking tape and whatever. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't have the patience for on that. On that note, um, uh, I think now is a great time to take a look at some submissions. Okay. We've already got a whole bunch. Put a couple of last touches. Yeah. And we can. Let's uh, batch them up. We've got a, about. Take um, a wee look. We've got about t a dozen submissions so far. And so. we can do the rain. Yeah, that's awesome. Maybe you get inspired. Um, yeah, I'm sure I will get inspired. Yeah. Okay, cool. So. I didn't mean to sound sarcastic. It just my voice. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I didn't assume you were. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, all right, so this is uh, one of our first submissions. It's a couple of baby bunnies in a Aww. den. Very cute. Yeah. Very limited color palette. Mm. Yeah, looks cozy. I like the massive raindrops next to the tiny raindrops. It's I like quite them. Clever. I like Maybe them. I will steal that. Yeah. Yeah. And the, <laughs> the ripples are very nice, too. Yeah. yeah. And I like They're the great. bunny's tail. Um, sweet. It is so cute. Great job, Katie. <laughs> Um, here is a lovely, ooh, ooh, this person on a walk with a giant daisy that's blooming. Oh, can yeah. you read it? No, I can't. Yeah, me neither. Um, but I like that the person is sad, but the flower is, like, happy. Because the person's in the rain, but mm. the flower's, like, receiving the rain. Yeah, but it's been taken out of the ground. That's true as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's in this fictional universe. Final shower. Ooh, Ooh wait. Oh, cool. It is uh, conveying the emotions and feelings that emerge when a raindrop touches the land in the skin. Wow. Very abstract. Very, yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. Looks like it was done in Illustrator. Mm. Oh, wait, it says Photoshop. Wow, that's really cool if you did Photoshop. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of shapes. Yeah. Things. Rainy day. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, a little video gamey. Yeah. yeah. I like that the people, well, they look like they could be characters in raincoats, but they also could mm. be like ducks or something. Yeah, great shape. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Uh, I like how subtle the rain is. Ooh, that's nice. Very atmospheric. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I love the detail on her. It's so nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is nice. This yeah. is it's impressive that all of you guys did this in like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Can you zoom in? Going for a swim. Hmm. Nice. Cool. It's from from Mexico. Huh? What? Uh oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Little mouse. Sad, sad mouse. You never like know. The clouds are very nice. Yes. Yeah. I like the blobs. Yeah. Yeah. And this brush. Rainy mm, day. Nice. H2B2. Mm -hmm. H2B2. What, is there a reference to something? Oh, that's the person. They've been chatting. Of, oh, okay. Yeah. So shout out. Um, cool. Shout out? Shout out oh. to h 2 <laughs> I thought you said shout out. <laughs> no. <laughs> this uncharacteristically rude. <laughs> cool. Oops. Wow. Zoomed in a lot. Wow, it's actually really cool when you zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks like fish over here. Intense. Like you're looking, um, you know, it's like a whale or something. Mm. It's cool. Yeah. Reveals details. Reveals details. Mm. It's uh, good. Looks like a photograph has been involved. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Colorful rainy day. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so cute. Yeah. Nice, uh, soft and hard yeah. contrast. Yeah. I like the atmospheric feeling. And this person I can't see. Okay, cool. Um, we'll try to resolve the uh, links that didn't quite work, but mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the first few um, entries. They have time, haven't they? 
You've still? got about, I would a say, about 15-ish okay. minutes. So if they already have something, maybe they can yeah. upload it. Um, maybe they can do something in 10 minutes. It would be very impressive. Um, So, um, for those who are just joining us, uh, we just looked at a bunch of awesome submissions from uh, the community for the theme of Rainy Day, which is also the name, of, which is also what uh, Roman is drawing. Um, and so, uh, the contest is for winning a one-year subscription of Creative Cloud, um, and we'll be selecting Roman will be selecting his favorite, um, the winner in about uh, 20 or so minutes. So make sure to get your submissions in um, soon by uh, like 10.40 to 10.45 um, Pacific time. So that's in about uh, like 13 to 15 minutes. And uh, we're gonna look at them all uh, really shortly. So excited to see. Mm. Yeah. And um, to submit, you can check out the contest tab, which is right next to the chat tab. Um, but there's a new link to uh, submit your entries via the form. So I decided to go with straightforward linear rain after all. Cool. Just because we have so many straight lines and we might as well keep up that consistency. Yeah. It's cool that um, you're just doing it with a negative space. Yeah. Very yeah, subtle. Yeah. Well, like, I could. Like rain. I could add more, I guess. Uh, well, let's let's see if it works. Yeah. Probably can. Um, but I'm not gonna do a lot of those lines. Just maybe a few touches. Yeah, that's cool. But thanks for suggesting that. So you've got about 15 minutes to get um, your submissions in. Okay. And uh, if you don't get them in uh, within 15 minutes, um, don't worry. We can review them in the next segment with Jenny Yu. And then after Jenny today is Corey and then Sophie. So we've got a lot of opportunities to uh, put your work in. Yeah. And you will have to deal with their taste, which is a little more conventional. So it might be better. <laughs> <laughs> So when I was doing Rain in my black and white book, Jacob Letters. Oh uh, yeah, cool. I will <coughs> I just accent I broke a nib, the pen Whoa. nib. And I scratched part of the paper. And I thought oh, that could be rain. Not a nib and on my, your tablet. No, on my metal nib. Oh, okay, okay. On my pen. Dude, that would be horrible if you broke your well, Wacom, you know. Nib? No, but then you scratch your Cintiq. Oh right, yeah. yeah. No, no, it was, was like all on, it was all on paper with ink. Uh huh. And so I used that later on to create deliberate rain effects. Oh cool. And so um, in the end, the whole book was kind of scratched out like this, and there are some pages where it, like you can see through them. They're so intensely scratched. And then I couldn't draw for about a week because I screwed up my arm. How did it you screw up your arm? Well, oh. it was so, yeah, painful. Getting into it? Yeah. Would you would you just stop, though, when you f first felt pain? I should have stopped. Okay. But I didn't. Because I thought, well, it's going so well. And I need to suffer for my art. Bye, Laura. So I did. Okay. And Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I like this big stupid brush. Where is it? You mean the um, that one? 
It's just makes no sense. Ooh. But I kind of like it. Whoa. No, what cool. I'm doing, but. Yeah, I think create slight uh, atmospheric effects and whatnot. Barely visible. On the topic of um, like your drawing technique and like large arm gestures, mm -hmm. I really like the um, carpal tunnel exercise um, infographic that you made. Oh, I, yeah, I did a yoga uh, thing, cartoon yoga. But um, yeah, it doesn't really help me anymore. I still have to go to acupuncturist because I have tendinitis now. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, well, this actually is pretty bad setup for me, to be honest. It's very good for the neck, but for the arm, not so great. Because it's always suspended. Yeah. And when I was working in VR, it was the worst because you have to hold it yeah. like that all the time. So for me... Well, it's a compromise between looking down and hurting your neck, or looking forward and hurting your arm. So basically, whatever you do, you're gonna be in pain. Well, there's like little things you can do with your posture to... Um, yeah, like get up and go away. No, <laughs> I mean like, <laughs> for example, if you're drawing like this, like, mm. uh, always have two feet on the ground. Oh, really? Yeah, because huh. then your weight is more on your feet. But if you're like uh, sitting, know that. if you're sitting cross-legged and you're drawing like this... Yeah, I'm always cross-legged. Then your That's... weight is completely on your wrist. Wow. But then if it's like, if you have at least one, one foot on the ground... It's not sexy enough. <laughs> <laughs> then your weight is at least on your feet, so it's like better for um, your wrists. Yeah, no, you're right, I should try that. Uh, health advice, yeah. excellent. Yeah, guys, take care of your, your wrists, take care of yourselves. Yeah, stop making art. <laughs> or like, it's not don't, worth it. don't work yourself to the point where, you know, it's too late and then you need to like go through like physical therapy and... Yeah, you know, like me. Tons of stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I went. I had this issue too, so oh, yeah? that's why I know. Well, yeah, stuff. if you work full time, it must have been even worse. Yeah. Okay, uh, here's all our business. Cool. I think the horse is a little, maybe too light. What do you think? Um, it kind of looks like a ghost, but that's yeah, cool. I like it yeah. in a way. Uh, maybe we can. It's like a spirit. All it's that. like you know, in an anime movie, where like the backgrounds are really lush. Yeah, and then the characters. That's kind of it's like what I was going for. Yeah, it's cool. Well, you know, all those uh, manga artists like Mizuki and whatnot—they pioneered this whole idea that. Um, Ooh, I like what you're doing there. It's nice. You have uh, pretty Sorry. detailed backgrounds, and then much less detail on the character. Yeah. So then, uh, well, I guess partly you can emphasize with the character and. Just visually, I think it's a really clever idea. Yeah. Simply separating them. So, um, to answer your question, Alexander, Roman did not name his layers, I don't think. Name? Yeah. Oh, no. Um, I'm terrible at that. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got... Um, you probably should. You've got about eight minutes to get your submissions in. So, um, so yeah, if you, uh, you want to have a chance to win a one-year subscription of Adobe CC, then get them into the link, um, which is in the contest tab um, next to the chat. And we'll be reviewing them in about 10 minutes, so uh, at about 10.45 a.m. Pacific time. Right now it's 10.35, so. If you aren't able to get it in in time, don't fret. Um, you can get them in to the next session with Jenny Yu. I don't know, to answer your question, Liana, I don't know if that, I think the size of the tablet does help sometimes with um, like tendonitis. Mm, like if mm, you're drawing mm. on like a tiny phone versus like <laughs> a paint sized canvas, right. of course, you know. Um, yeah, it's kind of. But I do agree that it maybe. is mainly from repetitive work that yeah. puts strain on like right. one or two muscles. Mm. Um, and so the key is to um, strengthen your wrists 
Uh, I do push-ups. Yeah, 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 totally. And, uh, you know, I'm stronger than you would expect me to be. <laughs> I am not stronger than you would expect me to be. But not strong enough, clearly. So what I'm doing here is I'm duplicating the layer. I'm giving it some blur. Oh, cool. And this way it has a kind of ghostly effect, which can be quite nice. Yeah, well, right now I'm just adding... What kind of blur did you put on it? Uh, Gaussian. Mm. It looks terrible if you just use it on its own. So you have to put it behind a more concrete layer. And then it looks, well, you can barely see it at all. How did you get that really nice, there's this kind of grainy texture? Oh, it's just leaves? noise. Oh, so you added a mm -hmm. purple layer and then you added noise to it? No, no, it's just the uh, noise over the actual layer, oh. which is uh, not great because you can't edit it anymore, really. Oh, but so it's flat on the layer. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I I like to live dangerously and take risks. So now, yeah, if I want to edit something, it won't be great. But now the blur is quite subtle. And I can do the same finally on the ground layer. Oops. That's cool. Well, I have to fix it a bit. Um, to answer your question, Chelsea, no, the the contest is not over, but you'll need to get in your uh, responses within the next, like, five five minutes or so, because um, we're going to take a look at the final ones really soon. Okay. Thanks, Tim, for answering. Are there more submissions? Yeah, and then also, um, if you don't get it in for the contest during this session, we we're going to have uh, six more hours of uh, live streaming with three other artists, so you can definitely get your submission in then. <clears throat> yeah, we got a couple more. Mm. Awesome ones. Happy raindrops. Happy raindrops? Yeah. Happy little girl. Yeah. Well, I, I have rain in tap, pretty tap, much tap. every book that I've done. So I actually went through a lot of different ways of drawing it. Oh, cool. And sometimes you can just um, imply rain by not drawing it. Have you seen Garden of Words? No. It's a, uh, it's a manga. Have, do you watch a lot of anime films? Uh, I read manga, not so much watch. Uh, there is an artist. Uh, there is a director named Makoto Shinkai. Mm -hmm. He what made he done? Uh, Your Name, which is like oh yeah, I heard it's good. The animation sensation, the Super right. Nation. I haven't seen it. Um, that's his most recent and like right. famous one. He also made a, a film called Five Centimeters Per Second, which I think you would really mm. like. It's very gloomy. <laughs> it's like my favorite film. Okay. And whenever I've shown it to people um, and watched it with them, they're always like, why did, why don't we just watch this? This is so depressing. A good sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah. But he has this, uh, he also ha made a film called Garden of Words, uh -huh. and it's like really beautiful. And um, the way that he represents rain in it is mm. like, Amazing. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Well, I really like um, 
Ja, Tsugi Brothers, ja. Tadao und Yoshiharu Tsugi und um, Seishi Hayashi. Um, a lot of modern guys like. Uh, Rain. And what's his name? Tap, 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 tap. Well, yeah. Oh, awesome. People in the chat have seen Garden of Words. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I think it's time to stop before I over Yeah, here. well, we've just got a few more minutes until the contests close. Um, so be sure to get your entries in um, within the next couple minutes, three minutes before the deadline. And uh, once again, the instructions are here behind me. Um, submission link is in the contest tab. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll take a look at them in about three minutes. So. Nah, just the colors a bit to be a tiny bit more obvious. Oh, do you mind turning off that layer so you can see? I see. Yeah, curves is good. <laughs> Are good, but the curves as in function. Yeah. You could say is. Uh, here's our beautiful tapestry. 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 Ooh, I love it. So cool. So did you also apply the speckled noise to the hills? Uh, yeah, forgot the umbrella. Oh, yeah, why don't you show us? Um, there we go. Hang on. Oh, something else. Yeah, someone was right, I should have named the layer, but uh, I'm not very good at this. I've been organized. Oh, I think I duplicated our main... Oh, this is fun. Well, it still looks cool with the speckle. Oh, um, uh, I think I found, found the good. Yeah, there we go. Now everything is speckled. Looks cool. Pro tip. Sweet. We've got like one more minute before entering, uh, before the contest will close. And we'll take a look. Okay. Yeah. You guys have any more questions? Yeah. <laughs> you can see. Yeah, I, I, I'm talking into the screen. Yeah, Alexander, you're right. It's easier to find. Yeah. Right. I just couldn't be bothered. All right, so uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna, all the contests, the contest will be ending like now. So uh, please submit your entries as we are going to begin uh, reviewing very shortly. I think someone just posted something. Yeah, so please uh, please post the entry into uh, the form, which you can find at uh, bit.ly slash rainy adobe. You can also find the link in the contest tab uh, next to the chat tab. So um, for everyone posting in the chat, make sure that you submit it through the form. So we're just going to get started with uh, taking a look at the contest entries uh, in one second. I uh, just got to wait for the final entries to come in. All right. So, um, yeah. So yeah, someone posted it at 10.44. So. Sweet. So this is uh, the, uh, an entry that we just received. Mm -hmm. Very colorful uh, cloud formation. Mm -hmm. mm. Gloomy, gloomy rain. Yeah, very, very gloomy. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, I like this. More abstract. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what do you like about it? Oh, well, it's very gestural and. I like the combination of thin lines and big strokes. Nice. Nice raindrops. Mm -hmm. Color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a self portrait. Wow. Hey, it's oh, it's animated. animated. Dang. Impressive. It's so impressive that yeah. Brendan 
Brendan Tonella was able to uh, do this within like two yeah. hours, one and a half hours. Yeah. Whoa. Oops, same one. Hmm. Another horse. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Rainy Nathan JPEG. Oh, yeah. Rain day. Is that me? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> rain boots. Hmm. Someone left the boots out in the rain. Yeah, but flowers bloomed. I don't know if I can wear them. They're moist. <laughs> a sad person in the rain. Yeah, kind That's of similar concept. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, someone's offering them an umbrella. Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. but, oh, it's a drop. Yeah. Very clever. Very cool. Ooh. Mm, nice. Yeah, geometric Something kind of look. Vectory, I guess. Yeah. Um, could we switch back to the screen really quest, quick? I just want to make sure we get all of the entries. We've got three more. Um, that was a lot. Yeah, so uh, here's another entry. Mm. Um, mm. Cool. A umbrella. Umbrella. Wow. Shy Rain Monster. And a uh, Chaliosis. Yeah. <laughs> no way! It has, it has a brand. Mine doesn't. I believe. Some, someone has some brand awareness. Yeah, these are really nice. I do agree yeah. um, to the commenter. Um, so let's take a look through them again. And uh, Roman, now is your chance to um, oh, maybe no. highlight one that you just like a lot personally. Yeah, that's that's what I'll do. It's not going to be about the quality. Definitely. Um, Gonna be ju just prejudice, <laughs> just pure prejudice, <laughs> but a nice, nice kind. Yeah. Preference, you know. Preference. Um, oh, tough. And I, yeah, I really like the shy monster and the bunnies and uh, I think the one with the jellyfish is probably my favorite. Jellyfish. No. Oh, the jellyfish. This one. Yeah. Cool by so. Ikatarina. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I think no. it's... Well, oh, it's Russian. Yeah, why don't you well, tell me? Well, people will accuse me of... <laughs> why don't you tell me? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all great. I, I just like this one because uh, there's something very inventive about this. Um, yeah. Super sharp lines and then... We can zoom the in. ...texture definition. Yeah, there's c kind of an interesting voluminous quality. Um, the, the whole thing seems to be almost animated, very lively. Ah. Yeah. yeah, there's really cool lighting in this one. Yeah, it's like, like luminescent. Lot. Awesome. Okay. Well, so, congratulations. I hope you. Is this the winner approved? officially? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, let's cool. Go with that. Congratulations. Okay. You People win a one, to agree, so. one year of um, Creative Cloud. That's yeah. awesome. Sweet. <laughs> Back to the horse. Yeah. So it looks like you're also wrapping up your uh, horse uh, Yeah, well, I think it's done. Nice, nice. There are some happy trees. Yeah. Oh, everyone's congratulating. Good. The umbrella that Leanne made was made from an eggplant. Oh, got it. Yeah. I thought it was a... Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's good. Well, maybe I can answer the last few questions since we have 10 minutes. -ish. Yeah. There was someone asked about colors, color reference. So uh, actually, but a real quick question is, what, okay. do you know what you're drawing tomorrow? No. Okay. Does that satisfy you, your question? <laughs> no, <Okay. laughs> not at all. Um, well, did, should I come up with something? I thought that's the whole premise that we yeah. just improvise uh, on the spot. Yeah, I think there's a theme. I just wanted to know if, if oh, you yeah. uh, No, it, I don't want to think about it. Okay, Yeah. improv. Improv. Yeah. Um, so someone asked about color reference. Well, yeah, I don't really have any. I have a book in my possession called... Someone was opening a can. Uh, called... Um, I forgot what it's called. Uh, there's a couple of them. There's one called Traditional Colors of Japan. And oh. the other one is uh, Dictionary of Color Combinations. That's the one. It's wow, very small. technical. 
Yeah, and it's an old Japanese book that's been republished, and it has uh, just blocks of color combining together. And some of these combinations are really not, and not particularly usable. Okay. But I kind of like that in a way. It's a, um, they're unusual. So occasionally I would just open that book at random and pick something and then play around with that. But normally when I do color work, what I would do is... I would just um, take blocks of color, literal blocks. So I would start with one main color that I want to be dominant. Let's say this. Mm -hmm. And then I simply start combining. And you know, when you pick a color, you see the previous one here, which is one of my favorite functions of mm. Photoshop. Um, and then, well, you can see how it works, and I'm pretty intuitive about that. I don't overthink it too much conceptually. And then I would pick my combinations the way I want it. Cool. Um, a good pro tip I can give is you can simply turn this thing into grayscale. And now you can judge just the values. Mm. So you can see that these two are pretty close together. Got it. Yeah. So you'd increase the contrast. Um, yeah, so when you go back, uh, you can select this color, which is another good thing about rectangles, because they don't have uh, any edges or whatever. Um, you can pick a color like this, and maybe more on the dark side. And pick thirty percent ah. over it. This is how I do it, which is a bit crazy, but I like it. <laughs> and then again, you can try grayscale. And you can see that it's better. Yeah. So of course, it doesn't mean that you should have good contrast. Sometimes maybe you want to have uh, low contrast, and you want to have uncomfortable effects. Like if you find the uh, color. This one, oh, uh, cool. hang on. like this one, and then you pick something hideous like this, and you kind of you can see a third color between them, right? Yeah. What, what the hell is this? It's a green screen. <laughs> well, actually. Wow, this is great. Yeah, well, I, I, I put a green color and it turned out a green screen. Yeah. All right, let's well, we're see. reaching the uh, end of our uh, so day fun. two. Um, but thanks, Roman, for joining us, and yeah. we'll see. You. We'll be back again for day three tomorrow. Um, up next is Jenny Yu, um, and then after is Corey and Sophie. So thanks, guys, for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye.